Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Travis. And I am Courtney. Uh, we both work here in the herpetology department at the Virginia Living Museum. Uh, so that just means that we work with all of the reptiles and amphibians that you see here when you visit the museum. So yeah. Travis is going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Yes, absolutely. And thank you all so much for joining us uh, on this Facebook Live session uh, where we'll be feeding our snapping turtle and our, uh, hopefully, a special guest today, which is our American alligator. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna be offering a little bit of food to these guys and also doing a little bit of target training. And we'll let you all see how that kind of works and, um, and we'll tell you a little bit about both of these individuals as we do so. And uh, now I would like to mention that we're, we're gonna attempt to offer these guys some food, but of course, whether or not they wanna eat is completely up to them. Um, they are both still in their, um, you know, they're still coming out of that winter dormancy where they, they um, are a little bit less active, a little bit uh, less uh, motivated for food and, you know, to see if they want to actually um, uh, eat today uh, all depends on whether or not they feel uh, comfortable, if the, if the temperature is warm enough for them to eat. So, um, <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and present a target to our snapping turtle and we'll see if uh, I can get his attention. Hey, Travis, buddy. while you do that, you have a couple questions already. What do snap snapping turtles eat from Jen Colton? That's a great question. Uh, so snapping turtles are very opportunistic feeders. They will eat just about anything they can come across, and that can include, um, you know, they'll certainly make a, a meal out of some um, fish if they can get it, and, uh, you know, other small, uh, invertebrates in the water, they can eat worms, they can eat, uh, they can even eat carrion. So if they come across a, um, any sort of carcass or anything, they will of course uh, take advantage of that. And they will also graze on some of the algae that grows naturally in the, the lakes and, and um, uh, other freshwater bodies that these guys tend to inhabit. <clears throat> Oh, snapping turtles are Virginia's largest freshwater turtle by far. Um, they can grow, on average, up to 35 pounds, and they can have a shell length of a couple of feet. So these guys will get huge, and males typically will get larger than females. So a lot of times, they, you know, if you see them, um, they're uh, coming out of the water a little bit or, or coming up to the surface for air. You know, they have very large heads and their shells can sometimes be the size of even a small nightstand or, or coffee table. You got two questions that kind of coincide with each other. Madalena Gray wants to know when and how do they sleep? And then the other from Annie Gale is, do you attempt to feed them at all during their winter dormancy period? Yes, well, both are excellent questions because, um, yeah, they, as far as uh, snapping turtles go, um, they, they kind of go inactive and they'll, they'll hunker down. Uh, you know, they, they have a fairly normal uh, activity period where, you know, they'll just kind of sink to the bottom and um, uh, just kind of hunker down in the, in the mud and the muck of the, the swamps and stuff out there. And they just dig themselves in and, and close their eyes and go to sleep. And that can be, you know, sometimes they'll take rest during the day, but most of the time they do, um, they will sleep at night. But a lot of times they can be active even in those uh, dusk and, and dawn periods. Uh, and as far as their winter dormancy, um, snapping turtles can tolerate fairly cold conditions because their range naturally extends uh, all the way up to Canada, to the southeast portion of Canada. So these colder conditions are completely normal for them. Uh, so they can be active for longer periods during the winter when other cold-blooded animals might, uh, might not be. Macy would like to know how old can they live to? So snapping turtles are some of the more longer-lived species of turtles we have in Virginia. They can reach ages of 60 to 80 years on average. And that's, you know, again, turtles uh, generally can be fairly long-lived species. So um, 60 to 80 
can be exceeded in certain areas. You know, farther down south, when they're more active year-round, they might actually have shorter lifespans than some of the turtles that live further up north. And that's just because during that winter dormancy, they can they save energy and they don't burn through all that. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're not being active, they're, all their cell metabolism is, is kind of slowing down as well, so they actually slow down their, they can slow down their aging process by going through those longer dormancy periods. Um, Pat Harris wants to know how often do you feed them? So we feed these guys three times a week, and we offer them, um, you know, we try to make sure we offer them the, the correct portions, and again, a lot of what they will do is um, you know they can choose whether or not they want to eat during the colder periods or during the summer if they're really really active uh, we may offer them a little bit more food especially if they're um, a lot more food motivated at that time so three times a week is is you know enough for these guys um, because they are cold-blooded animals so they don't really need nearly as much energy as us warm-blooded animals do um, to keep our, our body temperatures uh, nice and, and elevated. Jada from Williamsburg would like to know what predators do they have? So snapping turtles have very few predators when they get to adulthood. Um, when, they're, when they're young, they usually uh, can be eaten by just about anything because they're, they're, the hatchlings start out so small, they're about the size of, of maybe a, a, a small, um, of like a silver dollar, a little bit bigger than that, but Anything can, can eat them at that stage, even uh, especially fish can be some of their main predators, uh, shorebirds and things like that. When they get larger, they are just incredibly strong tanks. They are um, just built fortresses that can uh, uh, defend themselves. They've got these razor sharp claws. They've got these powerful, strong beaks to bite with. Um, and this incredibly thick shell as well as, as skin, so they, they are quite defensible. Um, so that's a little bit about our snapping turtle. Thank you so much for those questions. I'm going to have Courtney here talk a little bit about our alligator and what she is uh, feeding him. Hey guys, so um, yeah, it seems like our alligator is kind of ready to get some food. He's been taking a few bites here um, while Travis was talking. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about him and feel free to chime in with any questions that you might have. Um, I'm feeding him some little pieces of trout today. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see if he'll kind of come over to me to target for it. Um, so I'm using this red pole here to um, get him to target over to me. So we have this pole, it's nothing really special, just a pole with red tape on the end. And this guy has been trained to um, identify this pole as you know something that we ask him to come over to as a target to get his food. Um, so I'll ask him to kind of come over to me. Courtney, uh, Melissa wants to know how old is the alligator? Yeah, so um, as you might notice this alligator is relatively small as far as alligators go. Um, he's about six feet long right now. Um, so he is only about six years old. Um, we've had him for about five years and he came into us uh, about a year old or so. Um, so he's still relatively young, um, but he is growing very quickly. Um, he's grown a ton just in the time that we've had him out here in this exhibit. Um, so he is getting big by the day and as this spring approaches and things get warmer and he, his metabolism kicks into gear, um, he will continue to grow bigger and bigger. Riley, age eight, wants to know how long can alligators get? How long and in length? Um, so alligators do get quite large, um, it, but it depends on whether they're a boy or a girl. So female alligators stay a little bit smaller. They get to be about 10 feet in length, um, whereas male alligators can get much larger, anywhere from 11 to 14 feet in length. Um, so this guy, like I said, he is a male, and he's only about six feet right now. So he can almost double, or he can double in size. So we got a couple questions that kind of coincide. Why at age nine wants to know how strong the alligator's jaw is, and then Sharon wants to know how many teeth does he have. 
Travis, you're better at that question than I am. Can you please answer that one? Well, it's, it's hard to talk about jaw strength because, um, you know, in, in pounds per square inch, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not wholly familiar with the exact figure for that, but I know it's somewhere, uh, I believe, in the range of 1,000 to 2,000 pounds per square inch. Um, and, but that is also kind of a, a, it's a hard metric to use to gauge jaw strength. So really they are, uh, I'll just say it this way, they do have one of the strongest bites uh, as far as animals in, in Virginia goes, uh, and certainly in North America, um, they're, they're one of the strongest. And the number of teeth they have uh, can be anywhere from um, 75 to 85 teeth, and they continually shed that through their entire lifetime. So, uh, and actually, you know, it, certainly if we were able to do so, it would save a ton of money uh, going to the dentist because if we get a cavity, we could just lose the tooth. Uh, Kate and Ben asked if he sleeps in the water or on land, which coincides with another question of when and how long they sleep. Um, yeah, so um, alligators can sleep in the water or on land, just like the turtle. And, um, Sorry, I got cramped. <laughs> uh, so we do often see this guy under the water, sometimes with his eyes closed, sometimes just sort of resting there. Um, same is true for the snapping turtle. Um, but occasionally the gator will come up on land. Um, we actually have a space here in his exhibit where he can come up and get lots of heat. Um, and he likes to sleep in that nice warm spot. So being a reptile, he is um, cold-blooded, so he depends a lot on the temperature of the surrounding environment. So this space that's right here next to me is a nice warm spot, it's got a nice heated floor, and he loves to sleep up in there. Justin wants to know where did this gator come from, and uh, someone else wanted to know, uh, Kristen wanted to know, was he rescued? So this particular alligator was not actually a rescue. Um, we have had alligators in the past that were rescued. Um, this one came from another facility um, that housed alligators and had them born there and they needed a home. So we were able to get one of those guys um, and give them a home here. Um, we can only keep alligators here with us at the Living Museum for a few years um, because they do outgrow our exhibit space. So we can't keep him forever, unfortunately. So he will more than likely go back to the facility that he originally came from. And Jack wants to know what kind of water do they live in? And several people have asked, do they live in rivers here in Virginia? That is a great question. Um, so they do live in fresh water. They live in very swampy marsh areas um, of fresh water throughout the eastern, southeastern United States. Um, Technically, they do not naturally exist in Virginia. Um, their natural range currently goes all the way up to the North Carolina-Virginia border, um, but there are a few alligators that exist that the state knows of in um, areas like Great Dismal Swamp and those types of places, but they think that those alligators were brought there by people. Oh, maybe I'm a little startled. Um, and uh, they are living there, not currently a breeding population that we know of. So um, you don't have to worry about going out into waters in Virginia and having to worry about alligators. Um, Caleb, age 11, asked how fast can the gators swim? And then uh, Christy wanted to know how fast can they run? Oh, well, if you saw that little uh, startle moment that he just had, he, he turned around and darted under the water. So they can swim pretty quickly. Um, they've got that nice strong tail that propels them through the water. Um, on land, they don't really run very often, um, so that's not how they hunt their prey. But if you were invading their space, you probably wouldn't want to get too close because they can be quite quick in short bursts of energy. So Kim Flint would like to know how long did it take to target and uh, several people have asked what their names are. <laughs> okay, so a um, couple things and then uh, we'll start ooh, wrapping it up. If you guys have any questions though, please continue to ask them and we can answer them uh, when we finish up here. Um, so the target, uh, targeting question, 
Um, we've been working with this alligator since he's been here for a few years, so um, this has been a work in progress, but the, um, the bulk of his training has been since he's been on exhibit, and that has just been within this past year. So he has learned a tremendous amount in a very short amount of time. And alligators are very, very intelligent, so that's not much, too surprising. Um, as far as the names go, we don't have official names for these guys, um, but we do have some nicknames that we, we give them. Um, so the snapping turtle has been uh, called Tank by some people. Uh, I personally like to call him Vader, like Darth Vader, because he makes this really loud hissing sound when you take him out. Um, our alligator doesn't really have an official name either, but we sometimes call him Shy Guy because he is quite shy as far as um, our alligators that we've had here go. Uh, oh, let me get up here. So, uh, yeah, so if anybody has any questions remaining, um, go ahead and leave those uh, for us in the comment feed. We'll get back to those as soon as we can. Um, and we'll kind of wrap it up here. Yeah, and we just want to say thank you all so much for joining us today at this Facebook Live session. Um, watch us a little bit later uh, when they're going to be feeding the seahorses at 2.30. Yeah, and um, like uh, many of us have said previously, be sure to visit us virtually for all of our natural education during these closures um, here on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and um, as always, our uh, museum website, theblm.org, has all of the updated information and schedules of feedings and all those types of things. So thank you so much for joining us today, and um, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time.